off. Can we give the Lord a hand praise all over the building? Let's worship the Lord to our virtual listeners and watchers. We thank God for you being in the house of worship one more time. Can we welcome you? Welcome to the harvest. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the harvest where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest where the table is spread. Come on, my brothers and sisters, give God your hand. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest. We're glad. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest where the spirit where the spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest where the table where the table is spread. Come on, come on, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, give give God your hand. Come on, whatever we're going through in life, we come to encourage you to let you know that it'll be all right. Come on. Can we clap those hands like this? yourself you may not pastor may not be available your mother your father your sister your brother your husband you have to look in the mirror and tell yourself I can run on hallelujah I can make it hallelujah to do sometimes. Sometimes you, you girl. have 
have to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. And no matter how you feel, speak a word. give God a hand clap of praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice 
and be glad therein. Let me say amen. Happy birthday, New Harvest. It is the first Sunday in November. Amen. Today, this ministry, this church, amen, turns 23. You ought to give God praise. For 23 years of ministry. Listen, if you're watching on Facebook, you ought to put happy birthday, New Harvest, in the box. Amen. Let this be a memorable day. A lot of churches have closed down and shut down, but Harvest is still moving and standing, amen, on the foundation of God. Amen. Happy birthday, New Harvest. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, thank God for New Harvest. They say we wouldn't make it. They say we wouldn't be here today. But we're still standing and holding to God's unchanging hand. I will say not a perfect church. Amen. But we're on our way to perfection. Amen. Thank God. Listen, we thank God for all of you viewing. We thank you for all of you in the sanctuary. This is the first Sunday in November. Amen. I don't think it was coincidence that the same month that your pastor was born in, the, heart, the church was born in. Amen. I just want to say that. Amen. Amen. Some good things are born in November. Amen. 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 You go, you'll say the same thing about your month. Amen. But I'm going to be proud. Amen. Of the month this church was born in and the month I was born in. And we certainly thank God for all of you. I just got word that um, Minister Elaine Nelson's father's in the hospital in Aventura. We're praying for him. Um, it's good to see Deacon Blocker. Amen. Can't keep a good man down. Amen. Just last week he was down, but this week he's up. Won't God turn it around? Amen. And listen, we're praying for Deacon Adams and all the sticking shut in. Deacon Adams hasn't been feeling well. Amen. He had some ups and downs, but he called me this morning. He's feeling very well. And we're praying for Reverend Tyree, who's not feeling well. Now, I may not know your name. I, I, I may not know that you're under the weather. So we're praying for all the sick and shut in of the Harvest Church. Amen. And again, it's good to see Mother Hayes back with us two Sundays in a row. Listen, first Sunday, we thank God for all the pastors that came by. Amen. And blessed his house with a major word. Amen. Pastor Sean Williams from Quincy. Amen. Pastor Martel's Matez Whipple from Mount Nebo in South Miami, our very own Reverend Quran Law, the Harvest Church, amen. Pastor, Pastor Arthur Jackson III of the Antioch, the dwelling place, amen, and then Pastor Robert Jackson of the St. Paul AME Church. All those preachers done a magnificent job, amen, and we thank them for the word that God shared through them. Now, there's a word in John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. A very familiar text, but we don't want the familiarity to cause you to think it's stale. Amen. God has given me the gift to bring freshness to familiar texts. And we're going to look at this a little different today. Amen. John chapter 5. Verse 9, and we continue to pray for all the bereaved families, amen, that are missing their loved ones, amen, during this season. It says, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Y'all see it? Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tomb Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, y'all see it, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he or she had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. Somebody say 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been long 
Now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The, imp the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Here's the shout. Here's the shouting verse. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Nine verses for your consideration. Verses 1 through 9, we thank God for the hearers, the doers, and readers of his word. You may now rest yourselves in the presence of the almighty God. We salute our deacons, ministers, officers, and friends. We thank you, ushers, for your continued commitment. You may now adjust. I want to share with you on this church anniversary. I want to share by way of subject, finish strong. Finish strong. I, 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 know, I know the title may not match the text, but that's why I said we're going to look at it from a different perspective. Finish strong. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, whatever you do, finish strong. Brothers and sisters, Back in January 2021, we declared that this will be the year of recovery. We put that in the atmosphere, and we had great expectation based on 2020, based on all the losses we took in 2020, that 2021 will and would be the year of recovery. We started out with a sermon called Recover All. We backed that sermon up with I've recovered, now what? And I've discovered it's not how you start, but it will always be how you finish. Oh, look at your neighbor say some have started quickly. Yeah, yeah, and they faded out because, amen, you can start out hot and end up cold. You can start out fast. I feel like preaching, y'all, and end up slow. You can start out up and end up down. It's not how you start but it's how you finish. And I've discovered you're going to have one or two stars. You're going to have a good start or a bad start. But however you start it, I come by to let you know, even though it's November, you can still finish strong. Boy, I feel like preaching. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to finish strong. I don't care. I had some ups and downs in this year. Amen. But I'm not going to give up or give out. I'm not going to break down or break up. I'm going to break through because the best is yet to come. Can I, get, can I get a witness in the building? Brothers and sisters, if we're going to finish strong, we're going to take some faith. It's going to take some focus. It's going to take some fortitude. Preach black man. It's going to take some faith. It's going to take some focus. It's going to take some fortitude. It's going to take some faith. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You got to believe it even though you don't see it. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. It's going to take some faith to finish strong. It's going to take some focus. Our problem and the reason why many of us can't finish what we start and finish strong is because we do not stay focused. Boy, as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, uh, he did some stuff he didn't normally do. Amen. He walked on water. He got out of a boat. And many of us are still in the boat because we won't focus on the right thing. As long as you focus on the right thing, you can experience some elevation in your life. As long as Peter kept his eyes on the prize, he walked on water. In other words, he did something he never could do. Y'all missed it. 
Don't shout when I tell you this. God is waiting on you to focus so he can allow you to experience some things you've never experienced before in your life. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you stay focused, amen, you can have walking water faith. You can have mountain moving faith. You can cast out demons. You can do things you've never done before if you learn how to stay focused. We're too distracted. Yeah, our focus, amen, when you're not focused, it distorts your faith. You can't have faith and have fear at the same time. You, you can't have faith and doubt at the same time. And many of us focus on the wrong thing. As a matter of fact, amen, amen, this is not in my notes, but let me go here. Sometimes we focus on people too much. <laughs> This, this straight from the Holy Ghost now, amen, amen, amen. Sometimes people are our problem because we tend to focus on how they feel and what they think. I don't give a you-know-what about how somebody feel and what they think about me because I'm too focused on the one who qualified me. How can you disqualify something you can't qualify? Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you didn't qualify me, so you can't disqualify me. I'm too focused on who called me. Somebody say, focus. You, you, you can't finish strong if you have no faith and you have no focus. You can't, you can't do it. It's almost impossible. I'm going to get to the text. This is just the introduction. Amen. Amen. You can't finish strong if you have no faith, if you have no focus. Because if you have no faith, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October would defeat you. But if you have faith and focus, you know that I still got two more months left to turn this thing around. Because faith and focus equals, amen, equates to fortitude. Somebody shout fortitude. Fortitude is physical and mental strength under pressure. Preach, man. You know, I just discovered I ain't preaching almost a month. I feel it like I, I feel it like I never felt it before. Look at your neighbor and say, Fortitude will get you through some attitudes. Y'all ain't helping me. Fortitude will let you deal with multitudes. Fortitude is the mental and physical strength under affliction and under pressure. I'm going to finish strong. I can't be a spiritual weakling. I can't let everything bother me. I can't let everything upset me. I can't let, let, let me tell you, you if you want to know if somebody really loves you, watch how they treat you when they get mad. Can I slow down, Brother Leo? If you want to know if somebody really, really loves you, amen, make them mad. And the truth in them will eventually come out of them. They will show you and tell you how they really feel about you. That's why fortitude is, 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 is important because we got to learn how to maintain our equilibrium under pressure. Because if not, you're going to say stuff you can't take back. Oh, y'all got quiet on me. You're going to do stuff you can't take back. Because of your lack of fortitude. You'll quit a job you really need. Oh, maybe I, I'm about to stay there. You will quit a job you really need based on your lack of fortitude. Yeah, I, I, if I'm going to finish strong, I got to have some faith. Am I right about it? If I'm going to finish strong, I got to have some focus. If I'm going to finish strong this year, I got to have some fortitude. Listen, my brothers and sisters, I love this text because this text deals with three things I believe God has shared with me to share with you that you will finish strong. It's, it's not as obvious as the text dictates, but the text is tell it to teach us. Boy, that's pretty preaching. The text is tell it to teach us how to finish strong. We find ourselves at the pool of Bethesda. 
Can I get a witness? Which, 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 which interpreted it, if you interpret it, it either means the, the, the house of olive or the house of mercy. Y'all ain't helping me. I like that because in order, amen, to get olive oil, you have to crush and press the olive. And so many of us have been crushed and pressed. And that's why, amen, you have the anointing, the oil that you have, uh, because life have crushed you and pressed you to the point it produced some oil. Well, if you don't want me to preach to you, I'll preach to myself. I thank God for the crushing and the pressing because it produced something in me that I couldn't produce on my own. It's the, it's the house of olives and the house of mercy. Oh, thank God for the anointing and thank God for some mercy. Here's a man, here's a man, here's a man that had an infirmity. Brother Leo, for 38 years. Am, am, am I in the book? Yeah. Amen. And, 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 these, and these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, weak folk, blind folk, hot folk, withered folk, waiting on the moving of the water. Let's not hold you so long. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. It said, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. Somebody say season. Here's where it gets a little tricky because y'all think I'm going to preach it one way, but watch this. Here's the spin. If you're going to finish strong, my brothers and sisters, you got to realize the delay of season. I know y'all didn't. See, that wasn't predictable. Watch this. Here we are. Some of us are waiting on January 1 to change some things in our lives because we have not realized the delay of seasons. If you keep subscribing to seasons, uh, you will always wait for a certain season to come for you to make a certain change. It shouldn't matter what time of the year it is. If you need deliverance, you should get it right away. Ain't no sense of you waiting till January 1 to lose weight. Turn the plate down now. Go to the gym now. Walk now. Pray now. Ride your bike now. It, it, it's in the text. I know. I, I know. For an angel went down. At a certain season, we are enamored with season. And God can operate in and out of any season. I feel the anointing on me today. I don't have to wait till no January to get my groove on. Come on, help me, somebody. And some of you, and some of you allow seasons to dictate your joy. Some of you are regretting the season we are in right now. Uh-oh, y'all got quiet now. Some of us dreaded or dreading November and December. Instead of it being a good season, we're dreading this season because of a plethora of things. One of the major Reasons why many of us dread this season is because of loss of loved ones. Can I be real about it? And we tend to get down and we tend to get depressed. And that's why I like the text because the text is dealing with seasons. If you're going to finish strong, don't let this season discourage you. Don't let this season cause you to be down. You got to look to the hills from which cometh your help even in this season. You got to trust God even in this season. You got to know that God will never leave you nor forsake you even in this season. Somebody shout season. I'm, I'm going to do better by God and my church in 2022. 
Y'all, 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 y'all better realize the delay of seasons. Matter of fact, why, or oh, y'all going to like this, why will I delay being my best banking on a day that might never come? So I'm going to die in my mess instead of dying in my best waiting to change next year. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you don't have to wait to 2022. God can do it right now. Maybe, maybe, maybe y'all didn't like that point. It says, it says, it says, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever got in first got the prize. Y'all not going to like this because a lot of, a lot of brown people believe in this, what I'm about to teach today. If you're going to finish strong, not only should you realize the delay of seasons, but you should recognize the dangers of superstitions. <laughs> and the reason why some preachers don't deal with superstition because some of the most superstitious people are the people that call themselves Christians. Okay, I'm going to slow down because I see y'all getting a little bothered. It was so much faith and the water and the troubling of the water and the belief in the water that they convinced themselves if they did not make it first, there was nothing left in the water. I come to tell you, God don't need no water. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all. God don't need no rabbit foot. God don't need no salt. God don't need no peppers. God don't care how many times a broom touch your feet. You can still get married. They don't like me today. The God I serve, I can break a mirror and still be blessed for seven years. The God I serve, amen, gave me enough faith not to turn my car around and waste gas because a black cat went across my path. The God I serve gave me enough faith to walk under a ladder and still look to the hill. The God I serve don't need me to go to South Beach to get a washing. He can wash me in his word. Boy, I just need to go. I just need to go to the beach and get a wash. Something on me. It's called sin. If you want sin to get off you, confess your sin. And he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. And watch this. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You don't need no beach. You need a blessing. You see how superstitious religious people are? And then we, we talk about we walk by faith and not by sight. But we're so superstitious. God don't need no sage to get a bad spirit out your house. You better put that sage in some chicken and cook it. You're wasting all these gross. We got peppers in corners and salt, salt in corners. You better put that on some food and eat it. Somebody say, recognize the dangers of superstition. The water was stirred. Amen. And they say, the first one get in. And get, it baffled me. You know what? I, always, I looked at this text and I say, you know what? Why didn't somebody even try to be second? Because superstition locks us out. Superstition paralyzes us. Some of you Believe the horoscope over the holy word of God. Mercy. 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 
I didn't read my horoscope today. I should have read it before I left. You should have read the word of God before you left. The paper have the horoscope. The Bible have the holy scope. Can I help you today? So you better read the holy scope before you read the horoscope. Because it's horror. It's a scary thing when you believe something that somebody else wrote and then you put it on your life and now you're living by the horoscope instead of walking in the Holy Scope. Happy anniversary. I, I, I want to finish fast because I got to have faith. I got to have focus. I got to have fortitude. But I got to realize the delay of seasons. I got to recognize the dangers of superstition. Young lady, you don't got to move your feet when the broom come by. What God has for you is for you and can't no broom stop you from getting a groom. I'm going to say that slower because y'all missed that. Ain't no broom going to stop you from getting a groom. The only thing can stop you from getting a groom is your nasty attitude. It ain't in your broom. It's in your behavior. Because if you want a husband, you got to act like a wife. And if you want a wife, you got to act like a husband. She can't be, she can't be, she can't be allowing you to drop her to work in her car and you drive off. Let a man be a man. Somebody say recognize the dangers of superstition. I like this, I like this, I like this because the text is fresh now. It's fresh, right? It's not. Not stale. It's fresh. We, I, I see seasons. I see. I see. I see superstition. They. They. They were so seasonal and superstitious uh, that they were delaying the miracle that God had for them. Stop letting things stop you from getting what God wants you to have. Some of us believe in superstition more than we believe in scriptures. Stop taking your children to soothsayers. Stop taking your children to palm readers. Bring them to church. Bring them to Bible study. Bring them to Sunday school before you let them read a palm, open up the book of Psalms. Y'all will get that on the way home. It ain't about palms. It's about psalms. It's just psalms where it psalms encourages us. Proverbs inspires and, 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 and teaches us. It's proverbs deal with wisdom. Uh, psalms deals with encouragement. I, I give you two pills a day that make you have a great day. Take a psalm and a proverb every day and watch God move. <laughs> Y'all don't like that kind of medicine. Look at your neighbor. I say, I got two pills a day from Dr. Thompson. Amen. I got a psalm and a proverb. And if you take a psalm and a proverb a day, amen, it'll, it'll, it'll make your discouragement go away. Y'all not going to like this last one. But I got to, I got to teach it. If you're going to finish strong, you got to realize the delay of seasons. Verses 3 and 4. Amen. Waiting for the movement of the water, for an angel went down at a certain season. Seasons will delay you. You got to recognize the dangers of superstition. Nobody believed that God can do it outside of what they believed in. Ooh. Ooh. Say it slow. If you're going to finish strong, you got to come to the realization that God can do it outside of what you think. Here it is. Y'all heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again. God is not who he 
think who we think he is. God is who he says he is. I had to learn that. See, y'all think I'm preaching at y'all. I'm preaching to me, too. I had to, I had to learn that. I, I, I was the kind that played the lottery and put the, bi- the ticket in the Bible. Oh, y'all done got quiet on me. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, my younger days, I, boy, I go play that number and put that number in the Bible and put the Bible under my pillow and lay on it and want to wake up a millionaire. But God, I had to learn. I had to learn quickly. God is not a genie in the bottle. God is not there just to answer our wishes. <laughs> uh, God is not. God can work outside of our belief. God can work outside of our seasons and outside of our superstition. I ought to get one witness there. He's just that powerful. He's just that supreme. He he, 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 he has a supremacy. He's sovereign that we can't, as Reverend Law said, we can't handcuff him. That he can only do it the way we think it should be done. Here it is. First down. Nobody jumped in. In a certain man, we, we almost done, y'all, was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. This may make you shout because it shouted at me when I thought about it. 38 years, this man dealt with a sickness situation. And I've discovered just because he had it for 38 years, watch this tab, you're going like this, that don't mean he was 38. Sometimes we are older than our problem. No, he only had that for 38. He could have been 48, could have been 58. But he dealt with that issue for 38. Can you help me encourage your neighbor? Say, neighbor, you will always outlive your issue. Well, let me talk to Leo. Leo, you will always outlive your issue. I don't care how long you had it or have it. You will always defeat it. Here it is. It's in the text. It's in the text. Look at your neighbor and say, it's in the text. He says, he says, he says, and a certain man was there. Somebody say he was there. Which had an infirmity. Y'all see it? 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there, Jesus knew he'd been in that situation for a long time. Can you just nudge your neighbor and say, I know it's COVID, but let me just nudge you and say he knows all about it. That didn't encourage that neighbor. Look at somebody and say, he knows all about what you're going through. When Jesus saw him laying there, he knew He'd been there in that case for a long time. Jesus asked a very significant question. He did not ask him, do you need me to put you in the pool? He didn't ask, are you going to wait the next year to get in the pool? He said, will thou be made whole? What a question. What a question. And this is how, I'm trying to get y'all out on time. He answered the question, will thou be made whole? Which segues me to my last point. The question was, will thou be made whole? And he goes back to people. I told you in the introduction, many of us focus too much on how people think, how people feel. And what they do. Instead of him focusing on himself and answering the question, he points Jesus back to this. And y'all going to hate when I say this. Excuse. 
Listen, Jesus. I'm, 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 I'm paraphrasing. Listen, Jesus, I don't mind being made whole. Here it is. Look, look, what, look what he points back to. He points back to people, seasons, and superstition. He points back, but I don't have nobody, no man, to put me in the pool when the angel stirs the water. And every time I try to get there because of my condition, because of my sickness, because of my situation, they overtake me and step over me and get in front of me and get the miracle. Here it is, point one, realize the delay of seasons. Point two, recognize the dangers of superstition. Y'all ain't going to like this. Lastly, but not least, resist the dependency of supporters. Many of us have put people in charge of our destiny. Many of us are so dependent on people that we blame people when we don't get our way. It's in the text. I want to be whole. I want to be saved, but I don't have nobody. And I come by to tell somebody that feel that they don't have nobody, baby, you are blessed than people that have everybody. Because if you feel that you don't have nobody, now you can look to the right somebody. Look at somebody say, it's a blessing to have nobody because when God is all I have, I realize he's all I need. Look at somebody say, I thank God I don't have nobody because when we make people our God, amen, if they get us to where we need to be, they going to take credit and you going to give them credit and God should not be, nobody should steal God's glory. Okay, let me slow down. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm too excited. You got to resist codependency. Dependency is dangerous, especially when you're depending on the wrong source and resources. He said, God, I would be much better in life if I had somebody. And guess what? He don't even know he's talking to the right body. Some of you have subscribed that you're not happy because of somebody else. Some of you have subscribed that I would have made it if it wasn't for so-and-so. Some of you can't even have church because of some people in here. Look how much power we give people. Some of you will come here more if certain people wasn't here. Some of you will do much more if certain people wasn't in leadership. Your whole Sunday will be different if you didn't focus on people. Boy, I wish some of y'all was like your preacher. I don't give a devil who comes or who don't come. I'm going to come get my praise on. I'm going to come give God what he deserves because I'm not going to let people steal my joy. I'm not going to depend on people to give me joy. Look at your neighbor and say, this joy I have, the world, people didn't give it to me, and people in the world can't take it from me. He said, I got to go. He said, I got nobody. I got nobody to do it for me. Now, you may shout when I tell you this, but I need to put this in somebody's spirit. 
if you can't do it for yourself, God will do it for you. What I can't do, God can do. Oh, I wish I had a prayer in church. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm not going to be dependent on people, amen, to push me into my destiny. I'm going to depend on God because God the one who wrote my future out. And if he can get me to it, he can take me through it. I wish I had a witness in the building. Look at somebody and ask them one question. Will thou be made whole? Jesus said, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how much you don't need people. I'm going to show you how much you don't need that pool. Don't get ahead of me, Leo. Guy. I'm two-stepping right now. Slow dancing. It's been a while since I've been on the Saturday. You don't need people, and you don't need the pool. He said, because I'm going to die, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now, between two thieves. And one thief going to be indignant, and one thief going to be reverent. And the thief that I'm going to tell today, you will be with me in paradise, is not going to have the opportunity to get baptized in the pool. Some churches are so religious and so superstitious, they won't let y'all do nothing unless you first got baptized in the water, not knowing you can get a baptism outside of water because it ain't about a water baptism. It's about a spiritual baptism. And so in some churches, you got to go through the pool just to sing. You got to go through the pool just to serve. You got to go through the pool and you got to go through new members orientation just to do something. When God said, I'm not in no pool, y'all ain't helping me. I'm going to show you, you don't need the people and you don't need the pool. Take up your bed and walk. And some of us, some of us would have, let me, let me. Amen. Let me amend what I'm about to say. Some of us religious people would have argued with Jesus and tried to convince Jesus he was missing a step. Some of us would have said, Jesus, well, it's not the season. And the angel didn't stir the water. It's over now. Like some of y'all looking at me, past this November, this, this, I done, I done just threw this whole year in the garbage. What's the name of the sermon? That's the question, y'all. What's the name of the sermon? Finish strong. You can't throw the year away and you still got two more months left. God don't need January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October to bless you. He can bless you in the last two. Y'all don't know when to shout. As a matter of fact, stop talking to your neighbor and talk to yourself and say, these last two months should be the best months I ever had of 2021 because I done checked my seasons, I done checked my superstition, and I done checked who I depend on. You better be careful accepting support from some supporters. Because some supporters only support you to control you. Pastor, sometimes I know your love offering go down because, boy, you be... Swinging an axe. No, I'm not, I'm not swinging an axe. I'm preaching the word. And if you don't want to give me a love offering because I told the truth, God bless you and God be with you. 
but I'm not going to tell her the word trying to get some paper. Y'all ain't helping me. I got to say what God told me to say, even if it hurt my mama, even if it hurt me, even if it hurt me. Y'all ain't helping me. It, it's not, I don't have a monopoly on the word. I got to preach it in season, out of season. Jesus, I don't, I don't have no man. Jesus said, take up thy bed and walk. Then ask, this is what Jesus got in trouble, y'all, on. He did this on the Sabbath. The hell hounds got on Jesus' trail, Leo, because he delivered a man who had an infirmity for 38 years and he got his deliverance on the Sabbath. There are some people, let me say it right, there are some religious people can care less about your deliverance if it's going to mess up their program. Y'all don't like y'all preacher today. Sometimes we got to stop, amen, instead of putting altar call at the back, amen, some people sitting there struggling in the front, and we got to have altar call in the beginning. If the spirit moved to have altar call in the beginning, so be it, amen, because the program ought to have on it subject to change by way of the Holy Spirit. Somebody need what they need right now. Look at your neighbor and say, what I need, I need it now. I don't want to wait to 1030. I don't want to wait to 1040. I need what I need right now. He said, take up your bed and walk. Then ask they him, what man is that? We said unto T, take up your bed and walk. And he that was here was not what it was, for Jesus had conveyed him self away and a multitude being in that place. After Jesus finding him in the temple, here it is. He said, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto you. It's amazing we believe if we break a mirror, we have bad luck for seven years, but don't believe this scripture right here. What he's saying, I'm going to paraphrase it. I'm going to put it in layman's turn. If I delivered you from something, stop going back to it, because if you go back to it, it's going to be worse than when you left it. When God bring you out, stay out. <laughs> oh, you better learn like I learned. Amen. When people when people throw bricks at you, build a wall to separate you from them. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it slower. When people throw bricks, build a wall, build a fortress. But don't let the bricks hurt you. Let the bricks work for you. Look at your neighbor and say, You can throw all the bricks you want at me. I'm gonna build you out of me. So every brick you throw, the fortress going to be greater. The wall going to be taller. And I'm going to be safer. The man departed, told the Jews, I'm not going to even... Y'all finna hoop for me. Watch this. I promise y'all gonna hoop for me. The man departed. I'm in verse 15. Open the Bible. 515. This gonna make you shout. The man departed. Told the Jews that it was Jesus. Which made me whole. Y'all ain't hooping yet. What, what, what I'm trying to tell you, 
Amen. When the nosy folk want to know who did it. When the haters want to know who did it. When the naysayers want to know who did it. When your doubters want to know who did it. When the ones that throw bricks at you all year long want to know who did it. When they can't hurt or harm you, when they want to know who did it. When they want to know why you're not dysfunctional, why you're not, amen, y'all ain't helping me dependent no more. Tell them, baby, if you really want to know who did it for me, it was nobody but the Lord. It was Jesus that made me realize the delay of seasons. It was Jesus that made me recognize the dangers of superstition. It was Jesus that taught me how to resist the dependency on other people. May God keep you. May God bless you is my prayer. Look at somebody and say, finish strong. Whatever you do, whatever you do, finish strong. No, find somebody, put their head down, say, lift up your head all ye gates be ye lifted up the king of glory shall who is that kingdom the lord strong and mighty dab three people hands and say finish strong finish 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 strong. Finish strong. Beware of seasons, superstitions, and supporters. You don't need nobody but the Lord. And beware of them people that try to convince you you need them to survive. That's manipulation. I need God. I don't need Greg. I need God. I don't need Paul. I need God. Father God, we thank you now. What our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We thank you for this word. God, we pray for those that are listening. We pray for those that are in the sanctuary. We thank you again for New Harvest 23rd birthday. God, we pray that this word fell on good ground, that we will realize seasons can delay us, superstitions can harm us, and dependency can cause us to delay our deliverance. I don't need no pool. I don't need no people. Because in the text, you did it outside of the pool outside of the season, outside of people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Listen, if you're watching us by way of Zoom, I want to take you through communion. It is first Sunday, amen. In November, we're going to take you through communion. We pray that you already prepared yourself, that you know it is first Sunday. We pray you have some type of bread or some type of juice, amen, to partake in this Lord's Supper. Father God, we thank you now for the sacrament. We're not going to ask you to bless the bread or your body. It's already blessed. But we ask that you bless us, that we may take of your bread, amen, worthily, that we may partake of it worthily, that we may look back to Calvary, look inward to examine ourselves, look forward to seeing you face to face, amen, one day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For those that are on stream, we thank you for watching. Amen. On a Thursday night, Jesus sat down with his disciples, amen, to sup. He took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he told them, take ye, eat all of it. Likewise, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he shared with them, drink ye all of it. He explained and shared with them that the bread was symbolic of his body and that the wine was symbolic of his blood that was shed for the mission of sin for all mankind. And we thank you for tuning in. Amen. This concludes our broadcast. We thank you for sharing and with us today. Same back channel, same back station, same 
that time. Once again, happy birthday, New Harvest family. 23 years old.